Example 2, we want to construct a formal proof showing that vertical angles are congruent. So we want to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Notice in this one, we're not explicitly told our given, but our given is that angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. So take a moment, think about this. We actually did talk about this in class a little while back and see if you can come up with a proof. The hardest part is getting this proof started. So pause now or if you need a little hint, watch real quick and I'll show you something you can do. Whenever you have a diagram, you can always add in notation as long as you don't change what you're given. For example, we have angle 1 and angle 2 marked. We can also label this angle 3. We realize that this means that angle 1 and angle 3 are a linear pair and angle 2 and angle 3 are also a linear pair and that this is given in the diagram. So now we have three givens. We're going to use these to come up with our proof. We'll make this a two-column proof with statements and reasons. Remember, our first statement is always our given. Here we have three givens. We have that angle 1 and angle 2 are vertical angles. We have that angle 1 and angle 3 are a linear pair. And we have that angle 2 and angle 3 are a linear pair. Okay. We now know that because angle 1 and angle 3 are a linear pair, so angle 1 and angle 3, this means that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. This is the definition of a linear pair. We also know then that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. And this is for the same reason, so we will also leave that as statement 2. Okay, notice we have 180, 180. So we're going to take the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 and substitute that for the 180 up here. This gives us the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 3 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. And this is by substitution. Now we can cancel out our measures of angles 3, leaving us with measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. We did that through subtraction. And lastly, we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because if their measures are the same, then they must be congruent. And this is by the definition of congruency. And I can abbreviate congruency with the little congruent symbol. And that is the end of our proof. If you want to, you can put this little shaded in box at the end that signifies the end of a proof. You do not have to. You can just leave it with our final statement. Notice our final statement is always what we were trying to prove. So this was a five-step proof. If this is still confusing to you, go back over this proof, make sure it makes sense.